Good morning, friends. It is time for our morning meeting to start, so go ahead and grab your circle, a square or carpet, and we will get started. First up is our weather. What's the weather like today? Like today? Like today? What's the weather like today? Today is... All right, you're the weather watcher. Go to the window. See what the weather looks like. Is it rainy? Is it cloudy? Is it sunny? Is it windy? What do you see? Good job. And now, once you know what it is, you can go to your weather calendar and you can draw a picture or cut out the shape if you still have shapes left of what it looks like. You can cut out the sun or the clouds or you can try to draw it yourself. All right, good job. And this week, we are learning about, do you remember our author's name? Good, Leo Leone. Can everybody say Leo Leone? Good job. That is our author and today we are reading a book about the pond because we're also talking about ponds and this book is called Swimmy by Leo Leone. Here we go. A happy school of little fish lived in a corner of the sea somewhere. They were all red. Only one of them was as black as a mussel shell. He swam faster than his brothers and sisters. His name was Swimmy. Can you see Swimmy? Good job. One bad day, a tuna fish, swift and fierce and very hungry, came darting through the waves. In one big gulp, he swallowed all the little red fish. Only Swimmy escaped. Oh no. He swam away in the deep, wet world. He was scared and very sad. Here's him swimming away. See him right over there? But the sea was full of wonderful creatures, and as he swam from marvel to marvel, Swimmy was happy again. He saw a Medusa made of rainbow jelly. Whoa. A lobster who walked about like a water moving machine. Wow. Strange fish pulled by an invisible thread. Hmm, I wonder what that invisible thread could be. A forest of seaweeds growing from sugar candy rocks. Do you see swimming? Can you see the sugary candy rocks? Good job. And he saw an eel whose tail was almost too far away to remember. And sea anemones who looked like pink palm trees swaying in the wind. Then, hidden in the dark, shade of rocks and weeds, he saw a school of little fish just like his own. Let's go and swim and play and see things, he said happily. We can't, said the little red fish. The big fish will eat us. But you can't just lie there, said Swimmy. We must think of something. You see, can you find the red fish that look like his fish? Good. Swimmy thought and thought and thought and then suddenly he said, I have it. We're going to swim all together like the biggest fish in the sea. Whoa. He taught them to swim close together, each in his own place. 
look, here they are swimming all together. They look like one big fish because everybody's in a very specific spot. When they had learned to swim like one giant fish, he said, I'll be the eye. You see Swimmy being the eye of the fish? Good job. And so they swam in the cool morning water and in the midday sun and chased the big fish away. They swam so close together that they looked like a big fish and the other big fish were scared of them even though they were actually just a bunch of little fishes. And that is the end of our story. That was called Swimmy by Leo Leone. So since we are talking about pond life this week, I wanted to show you some pictures of a pond that I spent some time at and I've seen some really cool animals there. And so I'm gonna show you pictures and videos of them in the next few slides. This is a bunch of turtles that are sunbathing in a pond. And then these are, if you look closely, some baby ducks. You can see them following their mom. Uh, they're so small you can barely see them above the water. But the next few clips are videos of those baby ducklings. Here are those baby ducks again. Um, they do not like to be close to people because the ducks are very protective of their babies. So when they see you walking towards them, they usually start swimming the other way. Um, but you can see them pretty well right here. You see how spread out they are and then there's a little one hurrying to catch up and they can swim really fast when they try. And in a creek connected to this pond, there was a frog. See if you can find him in the next picture. He looks pretty small, but when you get up close, he's really, really a very big frog. He was about the size of my whole hand, maybe bigger. Okay, I hope you enjoyed seeing those pictures. And when you go on walks this week, uh, or if you go to the park, or if you have a pond in your neighborhood, uh, see if you can find some pond animals like frogs or turtles, uh, ducks, see what you can find and maybe you can even take some pictures or make a video telling us about what you saw and if you post it to Homeroom and then Miss Ryan and I can see it and your friends will be able to see it too. And so that is all for today and we are going to keep talking about pond life this whole week. Who remembers our letter this week? It's our last letter. Can you believe that? What is that letter? I heard it. Good job. Letter Z. Zig, zag, zebra. And what is the sound that Z makes? Good job. Z, 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 z. See if you can make it. Z, 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 z. Good job. We are learning about zig, zag, zebra. Okay, it is time to practice our letter poem. And I'm going to read it to you first, and then we will sing it. Zippity zoo zippity zay, Zachary zebra zip zaps every day. He zips in the zoo and he zaps all the way. Zippity zoo za, zippity zay. That's a lot of Z's, huh? Let's do it one more time as a repeat after me. Zippity zoo za, zippity zay, Zachary zebra, zip zaps every day. He zips in the zoo and he zaps all the way. Zippity zoo za, zippity zay. All right, let's try singing it. Zippity zoo za, zippity zay. 
Zachary Zebra zip zaps every day. He zips in the zoo and he zaps all the way. Zippity zoo za, zippity zay. Let's try it one more time. Zippity zoo za, zippity zay. Zachary Zebra zip zaps every day. He zips in the zoo and he zaps all the way. Zippity zoo za, zippity zay. All right. There we go. You guys can keep practicing it, and at the end of the week, if you can uh, send in a video, you get a warm fuzzy, and our bucket is getting pretty full. All right, that's all. All right, and what is our fruit of the spirit this month? This is our very last week to talk about this fruit of the spirit. Can you remember what it is? Good job gentleness. Our fruit of the spirit is gentleness. How many syllables does gentleness have? Three. Good job. Ready? Gentleness has three syllables. Gentleness. All right. Do you remember our verse? Some of you have already sent in videos of you having your verse memorized. That is so impressive. We're going to practice it together some more. A gentle answer. Repeat after me. A gentle answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. Proverbs 15 verse 1. Good job. Let's say it all together this time. A gentle answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up punishment. Proverbs 15, 1. Good job, friends. We're going to keep talking about gentleness this week and keep practicing gentleness. I will see you guys next time.